Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Of course, it's winter time. It's cold, it's horrible, it's rainy, there's blizzards, a lot of stuff going on. But you know where it's warm? You know where it's comfortable? You know where it's cozy? Right here in front of your computer, watching these vlogs from In The Loop TV, Harvey Performance, with your best host, Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor. This is gonna be a great year, folks. 2023, hope you had a great 2022. Hope you made it through the holidays safely. And now, let's learn more about cutting tools running into 2023. So what could we possibly talk about in 2023, the first episode of 2023? First of all, I want to start this episode off by saying it's 2023. We have to think about cutting tools differently. We can't keep regurgitating things from the 1980s, <laughs> 1990s, early 2000s on how to, how to run cutting tools. The substrates are different. The coatings are different. The way we manufacture is different. The way we should be using these tools in our tool paths, by the way, the tool paths are different, is different. So let's think about it differently. That's why I've come up with something called CTIC. It's a follow-up. It's a follow-up to the last episode, which was surface foot. But this is something called CTIC, C-T-I-C. And it's going to help you understand where you can run your surface foot better in your machine with your cutting tools. CTIC, that's what we're going to talk about. We talked about surface foot on the last episode and how to manipulate surface foot because tool paths are different, cutting tools are different, coatings are different, uh, machines are different, coolants different. Everything's different, but yet we still want to apply cutting tools the same way, right? Definition of insanity doing things over and over again and expecting different results, we have to do things differently. That's what this episode's about. That's what all these episodes are about. So this one, we're going to talk about something called CTIC, which is very important when you're running and figuring out what surface foot, remember surface foot was heat, watch the last episode, but don't watch it until you watch this one or watch it before, either or. Just watch them both. You'll get a lot of information. CTIC stands for Continuous time in cut. We're going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it here. We're going to run to the shop. We're going to talk about it next. Folks, this is great stuff. CTIC is very important. I'll understand why surface foot works different ways in your spindle. Continuous time in cut is very important to understand when you're cutting aluminum. It's very important when you're cutting uh, super alloys, standard materials, 4140s, anything you're running, if you understand how to use CTIC or understand what CTIC is, you're going to understand why certain things work one way and don't work another way. I've learned this firsthand. Like I said before, 35 years, wow, it's another year, 2023, 35 years doing this. I learn all the time. And CTIC is another one of those things that I use at the spindle, continuous time and cut, to understand how I can make our cutting tools run a lot better. Let's explain it. Okay, so let's just run through the process of how we should be figuring out surface foot to get to this CTIC thing that I'm talking about, which is continuous time and cut. Let's just run through a quick process. First thing we're gonna do is go down the step. What's the first thing? What material? Are we going to be cutting? We need to know what material we're going to be cutting because machinability and all the other stuff. So we're going to pick a material we're going to be cutting. Number two is what are we doing to that material and what tool path are we running? That's all two. It's not two and three, it's two. So what tool path are we going to be running because what do we have to remove based on the print? That's number two. Number three is we know the material, we know the tool path, Let's pick a tool. Let's pick a tool to remove the material most efficient because you got to know what the tool path is. You got to know what the material is before you can pick a tool because you have to know the flute count. You have to know what coatings and everything else. So number three is pick a tool. Now it gets us to figuring out where we want to run that surface foot on that tool to remove that material because we know the tool path. We know the material. We know all that information. 
we need to divide the whole thing by C tick. Divide it by C tick. C tick is continuous time and cut. Now, do I have a calculation for this? No, not yet. Will I? I'm hoping, I'm hoping there's a percentage that I can give you folks out there that you can use, but let's understand how to use continuous time and cut, how it works, for we can all just be more productive at the spindle. So now let's just go and show you what continuous time and cut is and how it changes surface foot and how we need to be mindful of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demo this. I'm gonna take two tool paths. Let's pick a material, what material you wanna pick. I'll tell you what, let's just pick a uh, 304 stainless steel. It's fine, material isn't very relevant to this because what we're doing is we're trying to figure out how c tick is gonna change. So we're gonna use 304 stainless steel and I'm gonna create two tool paths to explain how surface foot is different in those two tool paths. So I said we're using 304 stainless and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a block of 304 stainless and I'm gonna do two tool paths on this block of 304 stainless. Now it's 304 stainless. Both of these tool paths are gonna be HEM, high efficiency machining, and I'm gonna tell you what, I am going to use the same radial step over, I'm gonna use the same axial, I'm gonna use the same feeds, I'm gonna use the same speeds, I'm gonna use everything identical in these two tool paths and tell you why, if you don't divide it by c tech you can't use the same surface foot. Pay attention, here we go. They always say a picture's worth a thousand words, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this 304 stainless, I'm gonna to run two tool paths, two tool paths, side by side. I want you to take a look at both of these because understand, the material is both gonna be 304 stainless, the tool path is gonna be HEM, or in this case, adaptive clearing, which is done by Fusion 360, which is owned by Autodesk. Great company, great software, they do a great job. I'm gonna program two tool paths, 304 stainless, adaptive clearing, it's gonna be the same radial, 30 thou step over, it's gonna be a one inch axial, both these tool paths, we're gonna be at a six thou inch per tooth, that's our feeding, and I'm gonna run at 400 surface foot. I want you to look at both of these tool paths, watch them, and see if you can see why c tick is very important to that surface foot. Hey, did you see it? Did you spot what was different with this c tick? Continuous time and cut. If you looked at both of those tool paths, you're gonna understand that one was in cut for a lot longer than the other one. And when a end mill is in cut, or the continuous time and cut is longer, it gets more of a chance to heat up. And when it heats up, we start getting built up edge. When we get built up edge, we start sticking to the cutting edge. Now we just looked at an HEM high efficiency tool path. It was adaptive clearing at this point, but I don't want to pull anything away from dynamic milling or master cam or any of the other ones profit milling. Um, that was an HEM tool path. Let's just take a slotting tool path. Think about this even with a slotting tool path. If we take a slotting tool path and we do a series of short slots, that tool is probably gonna go in a longer distance if you add up those short slots because the continuous time and cut is gonna be very short. So we can divide this tool path by a short amount of continuous time and cut. Now, if we're doing a long slot and we're staying in there, let's say we're doing a big rail and you're sliding all the way through, your continuous time and cut or your C tick is gonna be so much greater. So if we don't drop the surface foot, number one, have less heat, of course you gotta have coolant, you gotta keep everything lower. If you don't have less heat, and 
Surface foot is heat, so we can back it off if our continuous time and cut is a lot greater, even in slotting. Aluminum, don't forget about long rails in aluminum. Other tools where the slot is longer, make sure you pull your surface foot down. Because the tool is going to heat up. It's going to heat up a lot quicker. It doesn't have time to cool down and start over. So make sure you use that as a factor even when you're slotting. One thing we need to understand with C-Tick, because I'm explaining this, and you might think that when it comes to a tool path, you don't have that much control. And it's actually, did, I, did my voice just crack? Control? I feel like I'm going through the change right now. I'm not really, but we don't have that much control. Okay, we do. You can manipulate the tool paths. There's ways to go in and do a pocket, do something called slot clearing, which is a trichoidal tool path, which means we're in cut and out of cut. You can change those tool paths to manipulate them so we're not in cut as long. Now, does that mean that it's or, or not advantageous to, to use some of these standard tool paths? No, you just have to be mindful with the surface foot divided. Divided by this crazy thing that the cutting tool counselor came up called C-Tick, continuous time and cut. Okay, I think it's recap time. Let's recap this whole episode. We're talking about something called C-Tick, continuous time in cut very important. It's very important for guys like me. It's important for you folks out at the spindle to understand this because you're looking at tool paths and understand where you can run the surface foot. It's also great to understand why surface foot in a certain material will run at 500 surface foot one way, but won't run at 500 surface foot another way. It's called CTIC, continuous time and cut. We need to start taking a look at it. We need to start manipulating it and making sure we either keep that down or if the continuous time and cut is very high, start dropping your surface foot down. Be a lot more manageable at the spindle. Get through it efficiently and effectively, just like we want you to do, just like the cutting tool counselor wants you to do. Well, hey folks, that's a wrap. That's the end of this one. First episode in 2023. Loved it. We followed up on surface foot. Thanks for sticking around. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with anybody that you think will gain from the knowledge of this. I also wanted to throw in at the end of this, all of these things that we talk about in these vlogs, the C-Tick, the surface foot, manipulating these. We design cutting tools around these issues. So we're using the same information I'm teaching you folks at the spindle to run your tools better for us to design our tools to make them better. Sounds like a commercial. I know, I work for Harvey Performance. I've been with the company for seven years and I love designing, making, running, and fixing cutting tool issues. So, thanks for joining me on the first episode in 2023. Hey, but before I leave, three things in life we're never gonna get away from, death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.